No one had to tell him what people were like. He already knew. That's wonderful. So whatever you find in God, you will find in Jesus Christ. You know? The Bible says that God knows everything. And Jesus knows everything as well. You know? The same presence that you may see in God, in the same attributes that we may find in God, we can see in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, let's go to, to see another attribute of God. Exodus, Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 15. The verse number 26. What does the scripture say? Hallelujah. This scripture is clear as well. It says, And said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, please repeat with me. If I, if I again, diligently heed the voice of the Lord or God, and we, if we do what is right in His sight, giving here to His commandments, and keep all his statutes, he, he will put no one of the diseases on ours. Can you believe that? So God is our healer. That's what the Bible says. He is our healer. When we are over him, he is promising. He has promised us that he will heal us. Amen? In this scripture, in this version said, I am the Lord, your God, and I cure your diseases. Yeah. He is our healer. He wants to heal us. You know, Pastor Gordon, God wants to heal you. Yeah. He is your healer. That's the reason because we were praying for Pastor Gordon. Because God is our healer. And that's a wonderful blessing. We have someone that who we may trust, uh, trust him, you know. Hallelujah. So this attribute of God is that he is recognized as a, the healer of his people. Amen? So let's, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 9. Let's see what the Bible said about Jesus Christ. The book of Acts, chapter, chapter 9, verse 34. Are you with me? The Bible says, And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus the, Christ, Jesus the Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately. You know? If God can heal you, of course, Jesus will heal you. you know? Everything that we find in God, the attributes of God, we will see in Jesus Christ. If God is our healer, Jesus can heal us as well. Amen? That's the reason because we, when we pray, we pray in the name of... Are you with me? In the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is our healer. Amen? Hallelujah. And I have one more. This is a wonderful scripture. God dwells in us. God dwells in us. So let's see second book of Corinthians. Let's go to the second book of Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 16. Hallelujah. 
Are you with me? The Apostle Paul said, In what agreement has the temple of God with the idols? This is a question. Of course, you and I know that nothing. For you are the temple of the living God. Could you please repeat with me? I am the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will, del I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So sometimes people, people don't understand, don't realize what does it say. But here, there are a great blessing. You know, in this scripture, we may find a great blessing. So he's, he's telling us so that he will live in us. Yeah. He will dwell in us. We are his people, and his purpose is to make uh, his house in us. You know, I am going to explain you something. How many of you think that we need water all the time? Are you, are you agree with me that we need water all the time? Do you drink water? Every day, isn't it? Because we need water all the time. You know? Maybe you know this in your thoughts, but if you don't drink water, it will not help you, isn't it? If you don't drink water, you will not feel very well. Is that correct? It will affect to your digestive system, isn't it? So, but if you have only knowledge in your in your brain, in your mind, and if you don't apply the knowledge that you have it, it doesn't serve to you, isn't it? So I may know that the water is really good for my body, but if I don't drink, so it will not it will not be helpful, helpful, isn't it? So I, I may have a wonderful feeling, you know, with, with the water. Oh, I know that the water is so good for me. So I like to bring it in my pocket. And I bring it to everybody, everywhere where I go because I know that I need it. I need the water. I need the water. But if you don't drink, you will not receive the benefit. Isn't it? So at the beginning, you just know. You have knowledge. Oh, the water is really good. Yeah. And somebody told me that I need to drink at least a, a, a glasses of water. But later, after you receive the information, you say, okay, I will drink the water. So I, I, will, I will keep in my pocket all the time and I will drink. But if you forget to drink, it will not help you. Isn't it? But when you decide to open the, the bottle of water and drink it, hallelujah you will receive the benefit. Isn't it? Are you with me? What I am trying to tell you. If you just know that Jesus Christ is the water of the living life, that is good, but it's not enough. It's not enough that you know that Jesus Christ is the uh, water of the living, living life. If you have a wonderful feeling with Jesus and you speak about Jesus and you share about Jesus and things like of that, that is good, but it's not enough. Isn't it? Are you with me? So that's the Bible say. That's what was we are reading. Can we have the scripture, uh, Pastor David, please? We are the temple of the living God. As God said, he will dwell in us. I'm going to use again. God is expecting dwell in us. What does it mean? I am drinking the water and now the water is not only a nourishment. The water is part of my life. You know, the water is, is activating many different things in my life. Yeah, You know, the water is flowing in my life and I am receiving the benefit of my life. I don't have only uh, I don't have only knowledge of the of the water. Yeah, I don't have only the water in my pocket. Are you with me? I am enjoying yeah, to receive the water inside my body because this will bring the benefit to my life. Amen. 
what I am trying to explain you. So, we know the word of God, isn't it? The Bible says that we need to obey God, the word of God. Are you with me? Yes or no? Yes. So, this is knowledge. But this is not enough. Yeah. Sometimes we, we attend to the Sunday meeting, and, and we are worshiping, we are listening to the word of God, and that's wonderful. We are developing fellowship, that's wonderful. But we need to obey his word. Amen? Are you with me? Let's go to the uh, book of Matthew, chapter 28. We have read some scriptures uh, about the attributes of God, and we found that uh, the same attributes are in Jesus Christ. And the Bible was talking about that we need to know His scripture, we need to know His voice, we need to hear His voice, but we need to obey His word. Matthew chapter 28. In the verse 18, let me, let me read this scripture, this version said, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 said, Jesus came to the disciples and said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go to the people of all nations and make them disciples, you know. So God is blessing us because we knew Jesus Christ. We receive him as a Savior and Lord. But God is expecting that we obey his word. Amen? So first, let, let, me, let me share this. First, God spoke to his people okay, and God encouraged to his people obey his commandments. When Jesus came to the earth, he, he listened God's voice and he obeyed his will. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus Christ fulfilled the perfect word and the perfect will of God. Amen? Jesus fulfilled the perfect uh, plan of God because God had a specific and perfect plan for him. He fulfilled and he gave us, because this, this is a commandment, this is not an option, this is a, this is a commandment. He gave us this commandment. So, According to what Jesus, what Jesus says, yes, he has given us authority in the heaven and the, on the earth and go to the people of all nations and make them disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to do everything I have told you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. You know? So God has given us a specific commission. All of us, should be identified with this great commission. So, it's my responsibility to grow up, you know, in the spiritual area, but it's my responsibility to grow up in God's kingdom. What, what I am trying to explain you is, so we have the responsibility yeah, to embrace the vision of this church yeah, and let that this vision become a reality. If I don't work in that direction, so nothing will happen in my life and nothing will happen in the church. Are you with me? So I need to obey God's voice. God is expecting that many people receive Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. And they become disciples of Jesus Christ. Who has developed this kind of work? Me. Say, I have this responsibility. When I am sharing in my church with my congregation, and this is the challenge for this year, I, I told them uh, some weeks ago. So how many of you know that our, our mission is focused in people? Everybody say, amen, amen, we know. The people is our mission, wonderful. So how many of you know that the vision is that one soul will win one soul? Amen, amen. So this is the challenge, I told them. This is the challenge for this year. Each of us are the responsible before the throne of God to pray for one people and bring one people, at least one people, to the church in order that we may disciple them. And after I finish the message, I challenge them. So, do you want to accept this challenge? And everybody stood up, you know, and came to the altar. 
and they engage, they, they compromise with God, that they will work, they will pray, they will be preparing to themselves, they will be receiving God's word in order to fulfill the Great Commission. And they will be obeying God's voice and they will obey in His will in order that this become a reality. Amen? All the time God is expecting that we assume responsibilities. But sometimes, if we don't want to assume the responsibilities, we are working in our, our own plan. You know? And we will not see God's glory operating in a supernatural way. So, we have only two options. We may walk in our plans, or we may work in God's plans. If you are suffering because you are living in your own plan, you will not see God's glory. God will forgive you, God will restore you, but you will not see God's glory, and you will not grow up in the spiritual area. But if you are in God's plan, even if you, if you, if you are living in the difficult times, God will raise you up, God will give you growth, God will help you, and you, especially, you will grow, you will become mature people in the spiritual area. So in both, in both cases, there will be problems. <laughs> there will be trials. There will be challenges. But when we are fulfilling God's plan, so everything which happens in your life will work for well, for, for, for blessing your life. Amen? Sometimes, if we are not obeying God's word, we will have serious problems. We will, fe we will feel ashamed and condemned and many different things. But God's purpose is not that we live in this case. God's purpose is that we enjoy God's presence operating in our lives, even in the middle of the difficult circumstances. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So I am ready to finish. First book of John, please. Could you please open your Bible in the first book of John? Praise the Lord. Chapter 5 or 5, chapter 5, verse 20. The first book of John. Hallelujah. wonderful are you with me the Bible said and we know that the song of God is talking about Jesus Christ has come and has given us understanding listen to me so only Jesus Christ may help us to understand what is happening around us amen that's the Bible said we know that the Son of God who is the Son of God Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ has come and given us understanding. How many of you would like to understand what's happening around your life? Would you like to understand what's happening in your life? Would you like to understand what is coming in the future? Only Jesus may help us. If Jesus is dwelling in our life. If we are enjoying his living waters. Amen? Pastor David, thank you. That we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. You know? When we are when we are studying about God, God will connect us immediately to the eternal life. You know? The Bible says that only in God we may discover the real life and the eternal life. So let's go to the same book, but let's go to the chapter first, chapter one, verse or a scripture two. Hallelujah. The Bible said here that 
the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. You know? So Jesus Christ talking about eternal life. You know? When we know God, we will know Jesus. If we if we want to know God, we need to know Jesus. If we know, don't know Jesus, it's difficult that we understand and we un, uh, and we know God. You know, God is expecting to reveal us about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the re, is the revealed manifestation to the people or to the creation at this time. Everything that we want or we expect to receive from God is in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the center of everything. Even when you study about the creation, how everything was created, you will realize that in Jesus Christ, when he, he was the Logos or the Word, you know, it's everything. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and Omega. Amen? He's the main purpose in the life of, of, the, of God's people. That's the reason because we need to know about Jesus Christ. Yeah. If we know Jesus Christ in a deep and deep and deeper way, we will understand God's plans. There is no other option. So, I am ready to finish. I know that all of us wants to have a compromise with God. You know? That's the Holy Spirit put in our lives. So you want to have a compromise, you want to walk in compromise, you want to obey the compromise, and you want to be fruitful. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? Would you like to be fruitful in, in God's walk? Amen? So sometimes I think this in my mind. Father, when, when I am ready to depart to your presence, I, wa I would like to say that everything... Every plan that you have for me, I have fulfilled it. Amen? Are you with me? I don't want, I, I don't want to miss his plans. Yeah. I don't want to abandon his plans. I don't want to live in the middle of the road and do my own plans. So I would like to fulfill all his plans for my life. Then I would like to depart to the presence of God. Amen? So, I want to be his ambassador all the time until I finish his plan so I want to challenge you please could you uh, could you close your eyes I want to I want to pray hallelujah